Welcome to the Holman Online Registration webpage. This is Mark Engler, the Activities Director for Holman School District, and I will be walking you through a four-step procedure to help get your student registered for co-curricular activities. Step one is to watch and listen to the PowerPoint presentation you are currently in. Step two is to read the online important documentation and rules that will be associated with your activity. Step three is to watch online the physical card information and to find out if your student needs a physical for their particular activity. And step four is to complete the activity registration process by providing all the personal information we need to help keep your students safe during their activity. Please continue to the next slide in this PowerPoint presentation. The Holman School District recognizes that extracurricular activities provide a unique opportunity for students to learn beyond the classroom. By being involved in one of our co-curricular activities, our students have an opportunity to learn many different things, including leadership, communication, working towards improvement, finding a role in how to contribute to a group, dedication and commitment, working towards a goal, and learning to win and lose in a positive manner. One of the most important things we hope our students learn is how to be a good person and part of that is sportsmanship. We hope our students become good role models, be respectful and supportive of whatever activity they are involved in. In order to make the activity your student is involved in as successful as possible, it takes cooperation between three groups of people. The students, the parents, and the advisors of that activity. Each of these groups has certain responsibilities we hope they follow through with. Let's start with the parent group. We hope parents provide positive feedback to their student during their activity. We also encourage cooperation with the coaching staff by allowing 24 hours to pass if something comes up that they are unhappy with. We hope they model poise, confidence, and sportsmanship. We hope parents support our Booster Club's effort because they do so much for our district. One thing I learned with my own children is to provide my son or daughter with time and space after each practice or game before I talk to them about what they might need to improve in. Follow the communication process for contacting a coaching staff or advising staff, which I'll talk about later. Volunteer and monitor your students' technology on their phone, on their computer, and face-to-face -face so we have our students treating each other in a respectful manner. Our students involved in activities also have certain responsibilities. They must follow the Holman Code of Conduct. They must show respect for their teammates, coaches, and opponents. They must also follow the communication process with coaches. They should be on time and prepared for all practices and games, model poise, confidence, and sportsmanship in every interaction at practices and games. They should appreciate the support of their parents and the program volunteers and support our cl Booster Club activities also. We are blessed to have many outstanding people working as advisors with our students in our activities here in Holman. We expect our advisors to be excellent role models and help encourage our students to make good choices and to learn and work together in their activities. Different activities require different paperwork to be completed, but with our new online registration process, most of that is done automatically by completing step two, step three, and step four of the registration process. Really the only additional thing you need to think about is whether your student requires a physical for their activity. We will go through that later in this PowerPoint and on the registration website. 
For each season, fall, winter, and spring, there is an activities code coaches meeting for all WIA activities and some other activities where students can learn more about their specific activity. Please look on the school district website to see if you are required to attend one of these meetings. The majority of the work in registering a student for a co-curricular activity is done through the online registration process in steps 2, 3, and 4. In step 2, you will be reading all the important information and rules associated with your activity. In step 3, you will be reading about the physical information. And in step 4, this is where you'll be entering information. Also in step 4, you will be doing an electronic signature saying that you agree to follow all the information and rules provided to you in step 2. In step 2 of the online registration website, you will be reading information about WIAA eligibility rules and expectations for sportsmanship, concussion information for both students and parents, information about the Holman District Activities Code, information about risks associated with the activity your student will be involved in, and also about impact testing. You will not be signing anything at this point. You'll be doing the electronic signature in Step 4. The Holman School District Activities Code is a school district policy that all students involved in co-curricular activities must follow. We hope this document acts as a guide and encourages students to make good lifetime choices. When students and parents complete their electronic signature in Step 4, you are promising to follow the Activities Code and all its rules. Please make certain to look over the Activities Code and be familiar with its information. I would like to take a moment to highlight on a couple of items within the Holman Activities Code. Alcohol, tobacco, and drugs are becoming more and more prevalent in local communities, and Holman is no exception. Parents must be diligent about communicating with their students on a regular basis to keep them from becoming involved in using any of these items. Students who are involved in activities and choose to use alcohol, tobacco, or drugs will be suspended from their activity. We also hope that the Holman Activities Code encourages students to do well in their classes. In order for students to remain eligible, they must be passing all their classes at midterm and end of term. Students who are failing a class at midterm will be ineligible until that grade is brought up to passing. When a class is complete at the end of term and a student has a failing grade, most often the student will be ineligible for as many competitions as failing grades they have. Attendance is also an area where students and parents get confused. If a student is absent from more than 50% of a school day, they will be ineligible to practice or compete on that same day. Students have many ways of communicating in today's world. They can text, they can tweet, they can post. We encourage parents to keep a close watch on their students and how they are treating other students through the social media. Students who choose to use social media inappropriately could have a behavior unbecoming of an athlete suspension. Student concussions are a reality in contact sports. Both parents and students must read the concussion information in Step 2 of the online webpage in order to help give parents knowledge to identify when their child has a concussion. We hope no students get injured in an activity they are participating in but many activities do have specific risks associated with them. In step two, both parents and students should read about the specific risks associated with the activity 
their student is going to be involved in. Many activities offered by the Holman School District require students to have a physical. Most physicals will last for two full school years. But April 1st is a key date to remember in this process. Let me give you an example. A physical examination taken on April 1st of 2010 or afterwards is valid for the following two school years, 2010 and 11 and 2011 and 12. But if that physical was taken before the April 1st date of 2010, it would only be eligible then for the remainder of that school year and the following school year, 2010 and 2011. More information is provided in Step 3 of the online registration webpage. You can also download a copy of the physical form on Step 3 of the webpage as well. Once you have completed Step 2 and Step 3 of the online registration website, it's time to move to the meat and potato of the registration process in Step 4. Here you will be providing the personal information needed for us to contact you. You'll also select the activities for the season your student will be participating in. We will also be looking for information about your doctor, hospital, dentist, and insurance along with any special medical information that we would need. In the end, you will be giving your electronic signature that says you have a read and agreed to all the information provided you to in step two of this process. Please remember when you are completing the medical information in step four of the registration process to provide us with all the information that we need to treat your child. If there is any unique situation we need to be aware of, please make certain you provide that information. Earlier in the PowerPoint, I mentioned the chain of communication between advisors, parents, and students. And I'd like to address that issue here. If a problem occurs during a season that the student and or parent are unhappy with, the correct process would be for the student to approach the coach or advisor and discuss through the situation with them. This usually resolves the problem. But if it doesn't, then the parent and possibly the student should reach out to the coach or advisor and discuss the issue with them. If this still does not resolve the problem, then the student should approach the activities director and inform him of the problem, and the activities director will discuss this issue with the coach or advisor. If this still does not resolve the situation, Everyone will get together, parent, student, coach and advisor, and activities director, and will discuss through the problem, and a decision will be made with the activities director making the final decision. If your student has an injury during one of their activities, Ryan Henke is our athletic trainer and will be available at school each day to help your student recover from that injury. Here is the information needed to contact Ryan. If your student is involved in a physical activity, they should start preparing for that activity well ahead of the start date. Exercising, eating right, drinking lots of water, and getting lots of sleep are all things students can do to help make a successful start to their activity. An outstanding program offered by the Holman School District to help students prepare for their upcoming physical activity is called the NASTY program, Nutrition and Strength Training with Intensive Exercise. This program helps our students get stronger, faster, and more confident in their physical abilities. We encourage all our students to become involved in this program. Some of our fall physical activities, which begin in August during the heat and humidity of summer, have an acclimation process that they must follow. WIA is leading the way in making sure there are rules in place that keep students safe so they are prepared and ready to, to exercise in those types of conditions. 
If you are ever looking for more information about the co-curricular activities Holman has to offer, please go to the Holman School District website and look for the Activities Athletics link. Under that link, you will find information about coaches, schedules, booster club information, trainer information, the athletic code, alternate transportation card information, and cancellation notices. The Holman School District Booster Club does many things for co-curricular activities. You don't have to look very far to see many of the improvements that they have funded throughout the district. We would like as many parents as possible to be involved in our Booster Club. Meetings are held during the third Wednesday in August and September at 6.30 at the high school, and then for the rest of the months, it's held on the third Monday of each month. Please try to get involved and support our programs. Another way for adults to get involved in the co-curricular activities is to become part of the activities committee. This is a small committee that meets two times throughout the year. They review programs, conduct annual reviews of the activities code, think about different ways to do program funding, do long-range planning, and look to find information about what people in the community are thinking about co-curricular activities. If you would like to get involved, please contact Mark Engler, the Activities Director for Holman School District. Thank you for completing step one of the registration process by completing this PowerPoint presentation. You are now ready to move on to step two, reading the important documentation and rules associated with your activity, step three, reading the physical card information, and step four, providing all the personal information that we need to make your students safe in their experience. We hope your student has a great season and enjoys their activity. And remember, go Viking!